I want to go into the substance of the deal, but before that, take me to the process, because I've been around some trade deals. They tend to take a long time, and this is really pretty fast. At the same time, you didn't have a special trade representative. Who did this deal? Did you do it personally? Well, I did, and Stephen Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, were the co-heads of the economic dialogue. But really, a lot of the work was done by Wendy Terramoto, my chief of staff. So, so into the substance of the deal, uh, we know that it covers a wide range of topics, as I say, from liquid natural gas to beef to financial services. Uh, at the same time, if you take these all together, how material are they in terms of the trade deficit with China right now? Well, I think they're material in three regards. The first regard is, as you pointed out in your introduction, trade arrangements are normally denominated in multiple years. This one, this first set, has been denominated in tens of days. So there's a huge difference in how rapidly we got something done. Second, these are quite specific transactions with quite specific dates. Essentially, all of these things are scheduled to start on July 16th. In the world of trade, July 16th is a wink and a blink. And I think that's important for the third reason. We have a lot more issues to deal with with the People's Republic of China. And I believe that the fact that we got these long-standing aggravations out of the way so quickly augurs well for the relationship pattern going forward. But we have many, many more issues, and so the next task will be figuring out a one-year plan and then with some data points in between, some deliverables in between. And then once we get through the one-year plan with success, then let's work into a longer-term plan. So give us a peek into that one-year plan. Should we expect a series of these sorts of deals coming out over the next year, or is it a different approach? Well, we hope to have deliverables. I think one of the historic problems with trade is that it's become a kind of long-term debating society rather than something that was results-oriented. Both the Chinese government and we have become very results-oriented. And if we can keep that going, we'll get a lot done. Well, as you suggest, sir, the, the things you addressed in this one are things that have been simmering for some time, and now you've resolved them, it appears. What's next on your list? Well, as you know, it's, even when I was in the private sector, it wasn't my habit to speculate on what comes next. I'm much more comfortable announcing things as we actually accomplish them. And I think between now and, and the end of the year, we will hopefully have more announcements about actual accomplishments. So, so to give you a sense, of, and I know you don't like to say what's going to come next, I have to ask you what comes next nonetheless. Sure. But give us some sense of the, the scope and the magnitude of what you hope to accomplish over that one year period of time that you just said is your plan. Well, there are all kinds of sectors that have not yet been addressed. So the methodology that we'll use is the same one we did here. The Chinese submitted their wish list. We submitted our wish list. We decided which of those items from the two lists were achievable within a very finite period of time. That's what we focused on. So now the question is, what time frame do we put on the issues that we didn't yet address? And so those talks will begin probably over the weekend. So the skeptic secretary are going to say, look, you got a $347 billion trade deficit with China. Exporting more beef and LNG isn't going to close the gap. So what's going to be on the agenda that will? Well, it's a whole variety of things, but the gap is not just a gap. The gap is made up of hundreds and hundreds of different little items, and therefore there's not going to be one silver bullet that suddenly tricks, takes our trade deficit from the 300-odd billion to zero. That's not the way it's going to work. Are you trying to get it's, it to zero, Secretary? No, I'd, we'll get it as far as we can, but the important thing is as we accomplished here, we want to do it by increasing total trade and by increasing the ability of our companies to export. That's the A number one objective, because that's what will create more jobs here. Number two is the trade deficit itself. Yeah. And that's the way we want to help solve that is with the beef. Beef, as you know, is a $2.5 billion 
market that we've been effectively precluded from. Your guess is as good as mine as to what market share we'll get. But symbolically, beef has been a big, big irritant for the agriculture community here because that fussing around has been going on for way more than a decade. 